The Bengals, well, they continue to get bitten by the injury bug. The latest on Jamar Chase, plus Jake Browning. He's off to an historic start to his NFL career as a starter here in Cincinnati. What he thought about the viral clip that everyone had to see following their win over the Vikings. Hi again, everyone, and welcome into Cincinnati Bengals Talk. I'm James Erpine of AllBengals.com. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and join the 41,000-plus that have already subscribed. Happy holidays. Hopefully, well, you're off for the week. That would certainly be nice. The Bengals not off for the week, and they're preparing for the biggest game of the season, according to Mike Hilton. Talk to Mike Hilton in the locker room, and he called it a playoff game. Sam Hubbard did, too. We posted both of those videos the Bengals, well, they're going to be without key pieces on offense, key pieces on defense. DJ Reader out for the season. We haven't talked a lot about Reader since the injury, but obviously it's a huge, huge loss for this defense. Going up against a Steelers team that loves to run the ball, the Bengals very much aware of that. And they're probably going to be shorthanded on offense as well. Jamar Chase, well, he's going to miss Saturday's game, according to Ian Rappaport. Zach Taylor didn't want to commit to that or, or confirm that report, saying we'll see when asked about Jamar's status for Saturday's game. It does feel like Jamar is going to be out, though. So uh, I would lean that way, which we can dive into that uh, in much more detail as the week goes on. But the viral clip of Jake Browning that everyone saw, and if you didn't, here it is. I love it. I think a lot of people did. The the emotion, the energy, the fact that he slams the helmet, uh, the the music that the Bengals added to it to, to show the slam. And I'm sure they'll have more uh, on their, their show this week from the jungle uh, on Thursday when it airs. But I thought it was interesting today. Jake Browning sits up here at the podium at Paycor Stadium and says essentially that he regretted the way – he handled himself there, not because of the emotion, but because it made it about him. I won't speak for him. This is, this is a, a couple of different clips of Jake Browning on his reaction to the win and why he felt like it wasn't doing the team proper justice. I have seen it. I uh, fully lost my mind. Uh, I, I think my, my, my one regret with that was – I mean, there's a couple – you go watch the film. It's never as good. It's never as bad as you thought. And uh, we played unbelievable at a lot of positions that were not quarterback. And so, you know, like just to rattle off a few, I mean, I throw a pick in minus territory in the fourth quarter. It turns into three points. I mean, that, that's lose the game type of play if we if our defense doesn't swell up. We lose DJ Reader, who's an all-pro level nose guard in the first quarter, and then we stuff him on third and short and fourth and inches. That's another one. We lose the game if they don't do that. And then I throw the ball up to T, and he makes one of the craziest plays uh, I've ever seen. And then I have, you know, an, an authentic reaction to, you know, he keep it all pent up, and then it comes out. But I guess my biggest regret was that this game, that game turned into, like, my revenge game, when in reality there were so many things that uh, went into getting that win, you know, making sure that it's it's acknowledged that, uh, you know, it wasn't just my revenge game. It was a great team win. It's not that I don't think I'm playing well. I just want to make sure that it's highlighted that there's a lot that goes into it and that it's not, you know, the, the team aspect of it. It doesn't get lost just because I fully lost my mind after uh, and broke a helmet and all that. So who has your paper? I don't know. I'll be checking my paycheck, see if it gets payroll deducted. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get back to you. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty calm. Uh, I'm still competitive. Like I'm, I'm not gonna fake. I don't know if you can't fake that. I got a psycho look in my look at my eyes a little bit. But uh, yeah, I think you try and play the whole game calm, deflect the questions throughout the week. But like I was in the back of my head, and you know it was just a pent up thing. I don't know. I'm like I I have an edge, I guess. I and I'm not just like some robot. So. I do have emotions, and uh, I guess I just kind of showed there. I don't know. I'm I'm over talking about the revenge game. It's a humbling league, and I'm not look I'm not looking back, and we're moving on to the Steelers, and 
and uh, I'm very aware that every week is a new challenge and excited for the new challenge. I love that. I love that for a few reasons. One, I can tell you firsthand, I don't think there was a guy in there that it disliked in there is in the locker room, disliked what Jake did there. I think they loved it. I think they ate it up. I think most fans did the same thing and had a, a great reaction to it. But that's leadership. And, and Jake Browning, he will remind you that he played quarterback in high school at a really, really high level, obviously did the same at Washington. He's done that so far with the Bengals. And the fact that he's pointing his focus, he kept getting asked about revenge factors and stuff like that and that's what led to him saying no, I'm, I'm focused on the Steelers this week and I know how this league can be and he kind of pointed the attention even though some were still asking about the Vikings pointed the attention to the Steelers and it's a huge game you want to call it a must win well I will I think it's a must win you got to go on the road find a way to get an AFC North win this Bengals team 0-4 in the North and they're somehow eight and six in the thick of the playoff race. They have a, a real shot at making the postseason. But of the three games remaining, this may be the most winnable one given the state of the Steelers. More time to talk about that, of course. But Jake Browning overall, he just continues to be impressive from his mindset to how he carries himself to how he responds on the field to mistakes. And, and he's done that now. I was thinking about it. He's done that now dating back to the preseason. He threw an interception in Atlanta on the Bengals' second-to-last drive, and it looked like it was going to be a back-breaking interception. You might not remember this. I do because I'm a nerd. And their final drive, or their following drive, which was the final drive of the game, he leads them downfield for what could have been the, the game-winning touchdown. Atlanta kicked the field goal to, to force a tie, but Browning has responded from then on. And he did the other day against the Vikings. He said he would like to get off to a better start so you don't have to necessarily do that. But certainly seems like that QB1 with Joe Burrow down has the right mindset going into a tough physical game that is going to be a matchup against the AFC North Pittsburgh Steelers and an AFC North rival. And everyone has echoed the same thing, whether they describe it as a bloody matchup, physical matchup, black and blue. There's been all these different uh, adjectives used, but it is certainly going to be physical. And this defense knows that the Steelers are going to run the ball a ton. Meanwhile, Jake Browning and the Bengals, they know they might be without one of their top weapons in Jamar Chase, and they're going to have to navigate those waters as well. We're going to have you covered all week long right here at Paycor Stadium as the Bengals prepare for their Week 16 matchup against the Steelers. So hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and for Andrew Fox Miller, our channel coordinator, I'm James Erpine. Thank you so much for watching Cincinnati Bengals Talk.